Have you ever wondered what would happen if a thousand feet tsunami were to hit the Philippines? Tsunamis, these monstrous waves born from the violent stirrings of the earth beneath the sea, are a terrifying spectacle of nature's raw power. They form when seismic activity disrupts the ocean floor, sending colossal volumes of water hurtling towards land at frightening speeds. The higher the seismic activity, the bigger the wave, and the more catastrophic the potential destruction. Now let's picture an extreme scenario, a tsunami wave, not 10, not 100, but a thousand feet high. It's a height that's hard to fathom, towering over the tallest of skyscrapers, dwarfing even the mightiest of mountains. Such a wave holds the potential to wreak unthinkable havoc. Now imagine this colossal wave, a thousand feet high, crashing onto the shores of the Philippines. The anticipation can send chills down your spine, can't it? Stay tuned as we delve into this catastrophic scenario. To understand the devastation first, we need to comprehend how tsunamis form. Tsunamis, often mislabeled as tidal waves, are actually a series of ocean waves caused by a large and sudden displacement of water. This displacement typically occurs due to undersea geological activities such as earthquakes, landslides or volcanic eruptions. Let's use an undersea earthquake as an example. When tectonic plates shift and grind against each other, a seismic tremor occurs. If the epicenter of this quake is beneath the ocean floor, it can cause a sudden and violent displacement of water. Imagine a stone being thrown into a pond. The stone represents the earthquake, and the resulting ripples are the equivalent of the tsunami waves. These waves then race across the ocean, maintaining their energy over vast distances. The speed of these waves can be mind-boggling, often reaching the same velocity as a commercial jet. Yet in the deep ocean, these waves may be barely noticeable, rising just a few feet or even less. However, the real danger begins when these waves approach the shoreline. As the ocean floor becomes shallower, the speed of the tsunami decreases, but its height increases dramatically. This is due to the water at the front of the wave slowing down due to friction with the ocean floor, while the water behind it is still moving at high speed. This causes the wave to pile up and create a wall of water that can reach terrifying heights. Landslides and volcanic eruptions can also trigger tsunamis. A landslide, either above or below water, can displace a large amount of water, setting off a tsunami. Similarly, a volcanic eruption can cause a massive displacement of water due to the sudden release of material and gas into the ocean. In a nutshell, tsunamis are born from violent geological disturbances that displace a significant amount of water. The energy from these disturbances then travels across the ocean, culminating in a series of powerful waves. So, an event of massive geological disturbance under the ocean could set the stage for our hypothetical 1,000 feet tsunami. As this behemoth of a wave approaches the coast, the devastation begins. Picture, if you will, a wall of water, a thousand feet high, barreling towards the shoreline with a power and force that's hard to comprehend. The first to feel the impact would be the buildings and infrastructure lining the coast. Concrete and steel would stand no chance against the might of the ocean unleashed. Homes, businesses, schools, hospitals, all would be swept away in an instant, crushed under the weight of a million tons of water. But it's not just man-made structures that would suffer. The natural environment too would bear the brunt of the tsunami's wrath. Beaches, once pristine and teeming with life, would be washed away. Coral reefs, critical habitats for countless marine species, would be destroyed. Mangroves, those hardy protectors of the coast, would be uprooted and swept inland, their vital role in protecting against storm surges and erosion cruelly undermined. The sheer power and force of a thousand feet tsunami would be unlike anything we've ever seen. It would reshape the coastline, carving out new landscapes and obliterating old ones. The shoreline, once a bustling hub of activity and life, would be transformed into a wasteland, a testament to the destructive potential of nature. Imagine the coastline post-impact. It would be a scene of utter devastation, unrecognizable from its former self. Buildings, roads, bridges, all gone. The natural beauty of the coast, its beaches and reefs and mangroves, all erased. All that would remain would be the scars of the tsunami, a haunting reminder of the power and fury of the sea. And yet in the face of such destruction, there would also be resilience. The shoreline, though battered and bruised, would not be defeated. Life, as it always does, would find a way to rebuild, to recover, to endure. 
the shoreline would be unrecognizable, transformed by the raw, destructive power of the wave. But the horror doesn't end at the coast. The wave continues its path of destruction inland. Imagine this, the colossal wave, a thousand feet high, pushes its way past the shoreline, carrying with it an unstoppable force of nature. As it moves inland, it doesn't slow down, it doesn't weaken. Instead, it carries on, bringing with it a trail of devastation. This isn't just any wave, this is a tsunami. As it travels further inland, it continues to wreak havoc, tearing down structures as if they were made of paper. Buildings that have stood for decades, maybe even centuries, are reduced to rubble within moments. The wave doesn't discriminate, it takes everything in its path, leaving nothing but destruction in its wake. And it's not just the buildings. The wave's speed and height mean that it floods the land, turning dry ground into a swirling malish of water, debris and chaos. Farmlands that once provided livelihoods for thousands are inundated, crops are destroyed, and the very soil is swept away. But the most heartbreaking part of this scenario is the potential loss of life. People who moments ago were going about their daily lives are now caught up in a disaster of unimaginable proportions. The wave moves too fast for anyone to outrun it and its height makes it impossible to avoid. In some places the water might recede quickly, leaving behind a scene of devastation. In others it could linger, turning cities into lakes, homes into islands. The landscape would be unrecognizable, altered in ways that could take years, maybe even decades to recover from. The wave's power is such that it can change the very geography of the land, carving out new paths for rivers, creating new bodies of water where none existed before. The effects of this tsunami wouldn't just be felt in the immediate aftermath, but for generations to come. Cities would be submerged, streets would become rivers, and life as we know it would be upended. This is the reality of a thousand-foot tsunami. It's a sobering reminder of the sheer power of Mother Nature and the devastation it can bring. Once the wave recedes, the aftermath becomes apparent. Imagine the scene, the roaring water has now returned to its silent expanse, leaving behind a landscape scarred by its violent passage. The first thing that strikes us is the sheer loss of life. A thousand feet tsunami would without a doubt claim countless lives in its path, a chilling reality that reminds us of the devastating power of nature. Yet, the impact of such a cataclysm is not only measured in lives lost, there's also the displacement of people. Whole communities would be uprooted, their homes washed away in an instant. Picture tens of thousands of people, if not more, suddenly rendered homeless, their lives thrown into chaos. The social fabric of these communities would be torn apart, with families separated and livelihoods destroyed. The economic toll would be equally staggering. Infrastructure, agriculture, industry, tourism, the lifeblood of the Philippine economy would be severely affected. The cost of rebuilding and recovery would run into billions, a burden that would weigh heavily on the national economy for years, if not decades to come. But let's not forget the long-term environmental impacts. The coastline would be drastically altered, ecosystems disrupted and habitats destroyed. It could take decades, perhaps even centuries, for nature to heal from such a catastrophe. Yet amidst all this devastation, there is a beacon of hope, the resilience of the human spirit. In the face of such a disaster, people would come together, united by a common purpose. They would rebuild their lives, their communities and their nation with a strength and determination that can only be marveled at. They would work tirelessly to heal the wounds inflicted by the tsunami, showing that even the most powerful wave is no match for the indomitable spirit of humanity. In the face of such devastation, the resilience and strength of the human spirit are what carry us forward. The scenario we've painted today is dramatic, indeed terrifying, but it's crucial to remember that it is hypothetical. It serves as a stark reminder of the raw power of nature and the potential devastation it can bring. By understanding these natural disasters, we do not invite fear, but rather we equip ourselves with knowledge, knowledge that can be used to mitigate the impact, to safeguard our homes, our communities, and our lives. It's crucial that we continue to learn, to prepare, and to build resilience in the face of such events. Because preparedness isn't just about surviving, it's about minimizing the impact, lessening the loss, and speeding up the recovery. In the end, it's not about the size of the wave, but about the strength of the people facing it. 
and we as a collective are far stronger than any wave. Subscribe for more amazing contents. Keep wondering, keep learning and always stay prepared.